All right, here we are. Welcome to day two of week four for our fifth grade bangles. We're in orange there. All right, been wearing orange a lot. I'm probably getting tired of seeing the same exact shirt. Apologize, but I'm making all of our videos, unfortunately, in one day for this week um, because of some circumstances that are causing me not to be available. Um, for Zoom classes next week and and to break this up into two days of recordings. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you to those who have participated in Zoom. I apologize for the inconveniences of sending you over to the YouTube videos, even though you prefer the Zoom class. But hopefully, um, if you do have questions, you're still confused, lost, don't hesitate to email me. I'll be happy to find some time set aside to uh, try to work with you, a uh, special, maybe a Google Meet session or something like that. Because um, I want to make sure you understand this and, and can grasp it and you don't feel lost. Okay? So we have 6 eighths minus 1 fourth, which was yesterday's exit ticket for day one of week four. You hopefully found the common denominator to be eight, which means I didn't need to change 6 eighths at all. I can keep it. Then you turned one fourth, hopefully, into two eighths. Because four times two equals eight. So you do one times two to get you two. Then the next step that you hopefully did, if not, maybe this is where your mistake happened, is subtract six eighths minus two eighths to give you four eighths. And that's an okay answer. It's a good answer, but not a great answer. Great answer is to ask yourself what number can go into four and eight. 2 goes into 4 and 8. Is there any other numbers? Uh, 4 goes into 4 and 8. So I can divide each number by 4, which will then give me 4 divided by 4, 1, 8 divided by 4, 2, which equals 1 half. That's the simplest reduced answer here, which would be a great answer. Good answer, great answer. So, you could have maybe gotten two fourths, maybe you divided each number by two, but to get the reduced, you would have had to divide it again by two. All right, so we're sticking with subtraction, but this time we have some mixed numbers that we're subtracting, okay? Um, and the nice thing here is they're common denominators. Oh, I love common denominators. They're great. Makes things a little bit easier. Can't make it too easy for you. Okay. So the challenge here, though, is let's say I have eight and one fourth of something. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. First thing I'm going to look at is hey, I have the whole number here. I could take away three. So why did I do that? One, two, three. Now I'm left with five. So I'm going to take away my numerator. Can I take three away from one? No. Oh, man, what am I going to do? Let me backtrack. Let me go back to this. Originally eight. What ends up happening is you need to turn one of these whole numbers into a fraction. Because we don't, we don't just have eight. We have eight and one fourth. So I'm going to take one of these whole numbers, and I'm going to break it into fourths. So now I have seven holes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And how many fourths? One, two, three, four, five. Five fourths. Now I can take away three, and three is a whole number, and 
if that's my my number I'm going to subtract from, I can also take away 3 as my numerator. So let's take away 3 holes. 1, 2, 3. And now let's take away my 3 as my numerator. 1, 2, 3. So what does that picture show me I'm left with? It shows me I have 1, 2, 3, 4 holes and 2 to what? What's my denominator that can't change? Fourths. 4 and 2 fourths. We can simplify it, but I'm not going to worry about that today. If you want to simplify it, I'm okay with that answer. Okay. If you want to simplify it, you would divide each by 2 and get 4 and 1 half. But 4 and 2 fourths is okay by me today. Let's move on to number 2. 9 and 5 sevenths minus 3 and 6 sevenths. So I would make 9 of something and then 5 sevenths of it. Here's my 9. Here's, I'm going to take a whole box to help me figure out this whole sevenths piece. Break it into sevenths. I'm going to take away two of them to show I actually only have five. Five sevenths. So now I have nine and five sevenths. I'm taking away three and six sevenths. So maybe the question I should ask myself first is can I take away my numerator from, can I take away this numerator from this numerator? Can I take away six from five? So if you have five dollars, can you give me six? No. So that, therefore, I'm going to need to break this whole number up into seven parts, one of them. Now, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, sevenths, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 holes. I'm going to, let, I'm going to pause here and let you take over. Hit the pause button now. All right, so hopefully you recognize you have eight holes and 12 seven sevenths. Taking away six sevenths from the numerator of 12 will leave you six sevenths. Right? Take away six, one, two, three, four, five. Six. Now I'm left with one, two, three, four, five, six, sevenths. I'm going to take away three as my whole number. One, two, three. Leaves me one, two, three, four, five left over as my whole number. Five and six sevenths. All of today, notice. The common pattern here is I can't take my numerator, my second numerator, away from my first numerator. So I need to break up a whole number here in my first whole number. So 8 and 3, 6 minus 2 and 4, 6. You know and I know I can't take 4 away from 3. So following the steps that we've been practicing, go ahead and find the answer to this problem. Okay, hit the pause button now, please. All right, so we have 8 and 3, 6, and we're trying to take away 2 and 4, 6 from it. Same denominator, so we don't need to find a common denominator. That's a nice, easy, one less step to have to worry about. But I can't take this numerator away from that numerator. So I have to break up one of my whole numbers okay, into 6, because that's the denominator. six parts in that whole number. I'm not liking how they don't look partitioned very well. 
apologize, I'm not the best drawer. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, six, and I only have seven holes left. Now I can go ahead and do some subtraction, which I hope you did. Hopefully you recognize I can take four away from nine. That gives me five, six, and then I can take two away from seven to give me five, giving me the answer of five and five, six. Now let's actually do that in our picture here. So I take away four, one, two, three, four, gives me five, six left over, and two holes. One, two, gives me one, two, three, four, five holes left over. Five and five, six. All right, number four. Three and one third minus one and two thirds. Can't take two away from one. Got to break up that three and one third. Hit the pause button to solve now, please. Three and one third, here's my picture. If you didn't draw the picture right, check that first. Now make sure it's correct. If it's not correct, then go ahead and the pause button and fix those mistakes you had after that. But if the picture looks good, let's go ahead and see if we can take away one and two thirds from it. By breaking up the, this whole number, I need to break it into thirds. Okay, now I have one, two, three, four thirds. And I have two holes. I can now take away two from four to give me two thirds. I'm going to take away two, one, two, leaving me with two thirds. I'm going to take away one hole, which leaves me with one hole, one and two thirds being my solution. All right, so go ahead and do your exit ticket now, 4 and 1 fourth minus 1 and 2 fourths, and submit it on the Google form as usual. And we'll see you back here for day three, our last math session. Can't wait for it. Although I'm going to miss you guys. So we'll see you back here tomorrow.